Hi everybody, this is Mad Dog from Mad Dog Audios. To start off, if you are new to this channel, welcome. The Return of the Crazy Demon is the third project that I will be starting on as I continue working on the Return of the Mount Hua Sect, also known as the Return of the Blossoming Blade, as well as Invincible Mumu. I hope you enjoy my narration of this series, and if you do, I would appreciate it if you can hit the thumbs up button so that I know if you want to listen to more from this series, as well as the subscribe button to support my channel and the work I'm putting in to make these audio recordings. I would also love to hear what you all think about my narrations, so please leave me a comment. I'd love to be able to communicate with all my listeners out there. With all that being said, I hope you enjoy these first three chapters. The Return of the Crazy Demon Chapter 1 Among them I am the most... Most martial artists are crazy. They train day and night to kill others. They skip meals and avoid relieving themselves to increase their internal energy. Just how crazy is a martial artist? A martial artist is like a monkey wielding a sword all day to kill other monkeys or sitting cross-legged while staring at a wall to find enlightenment. A crazy monkey wielding swords in both hands. A crazy monkey that practices the art of meditation. That is the essence of a martial artist. There is little difference whether they be chivalrous heroes who sought only to help others, or the mooded malayans who considered themselves justice incarnate. No matter their background, martial artists are people who are obsessed with becoming superior to others in martial arts. In that sense, martial arts drove the crazy bastards even deeper into madness. Just as there is no end to learning, there is no end to learning martial arts. Since the path of their ultimate destination is endless, it is no surprise that martial artists on this path fall even faster into madness. There are even times when both their bodies and minds break at the same time, causing a martial artist to enter a state of key deviation. Of course, I've also been there. An ancient saying stated, Pass to the qualified. The saying, means not to teach those unqualified, but for martial artists, it is intended as a warning not to teach those crazy bastards who can barely be considered human. What would a crazy bastard do with a powerful martial art technique? They would release their innate desires with no inhibitions. Kang Ho is a place where perverts and bloodthirsty monsters spread like an infectious disease as they sate their desires and people are trained in martial arts to hunt down and kill them. Therefore, the phrase, the principles of Kang Ho have sunk to the ground, shows that the world is filled with more madmen driven mad by martial arts than ordinary people. The cycle of insanity in Kang Ho continues to this day. Even the chivalrous heroes who hunt down the crazy bastards descend into madness. In a place like this, I lived my life taking down those crazy bastards. These crazy bastards exist in both orthodox and unorthodox factions, hidden among the various sects of both sides. Then, there are the demon cultists who openly compete to determine who is the craziest among them. I've made many enemies all over the place because I attacked those who deserve to die regardless of their association. However, I hate demon cultists the most. Some chivalrous warriors in orthodox factions try to deal with everything themselves. Some spirited men in the unorthodox factions also try not to cross the line. However, demon cultists are a bunch of monkeys who's lost their wits, spew poison, shoot thunder from swords, appear out of nowhere, use strange tricks to make everything around them freeze and cause people to suffer. These crazy monkeys spread like a plague in Kang Ho, sowing chaos and causing people to call it the demon cult's world. I would beat those crazy beasts to death by any means. Nevertheless, there are still too many monkeys that I need to deal with. I am the crazy demon. Chapter 2 Escape's Final Destination Everyone grows old, including me. I never felt any fatigue in the past not even after fleeing from the Mudim Alliance for seven days straight. Yet now, it feels like I've aged ten years since these bastards started hunting me. 
If I knew this would happen, I would have trained harder. Yet humans repeat the same mistakes only to end up with regrets. Since I didn't have a destination in mind, I lost my way while fleeing. Along the way, the colorful variety of curses from my pursuers became even more audible. Words cursing me as a son of a bitch, a bastard, a motherfucker, and a parentless orphan filled the air. Well, I am an orphan, at least that much is true. Nevertheless, curses about my parents were added to the variety. It's crazy how there are people who would swear at the parents of an orphan like me. That's just how crazy this world has become. I have killed quite a few people for daring to speak to me like that in the past. But now, the number of voices cursing at me has multiplied. I found it best to run away. I can't believe a man like me is running. How shameful. But that is just proof of how intimidating the demon cult is. Even though I have killed so many during my escape, there are still numerous martial masters in the cult who could fight me on equal footing. When I was a naive young man, I aspired to become the god of martial arts. Why did I recall my old aspirations in the middle of the chase? I don't know either. Whenever I talked about my dream, the people around me would tell me I was delusional, telling me that my dream of becoming a martial god was a futile and vain pursuit. Yet, if it was easily achievable, it wouldn't be a dream, right? A dream must always be a challenge to fulfill. It's always the same even now. Isn't it because I set my aims and standards high that the demon cult, the evil of all evils, and one of the three prominent factions of Mudim, is chasing me? Being chased by the demon cult marks you as a true man. Perhaps because they are chasing me like a bunch of hound dogs, the feeling was more exhilarating than ever. Just the other day, I was being chased by the Mudim alliance, and now I am being pursued by the demon cult. Though I could not become a martial god, I have achieved something that ordinary men would never even dream of doing. This item I stole from the demon cult must be extraordinary. If not, why else would those crazy scumbags be hunting me down so desperately? I knew it would be amusing to harass the demon cult. Even if I had known this in the past, however, I would never have dared to attempt it because I was not strong enough at the time. Even now, I think I should have trained a little more before doing this. Humans indeed always make the same mistakes. Damn it. I have always had pride in my talents. A man good with mind games, schemes, tactics, strategies, lies, never falling for honey traps, and a high level in movement skills. The craziest and most versatile man in all of Kangho, one who kept his talents hidden from sight. In particular, Honey traps never worked on me because attractive women didn't like me in the first place. My past experiences prove it. Seeing haze appearing in front of me as I ran, I figured that the place I was approaching was where fog often appeared. Where in the world was I running to? Judging from the area, the cliff in front of me looked like a particularly infamous valley. This spot is famous because the masters of the demon cult and orthodox faction competed against each other on both sides of the carved canyon in the center. Had the orthodox faction won then, perhaps the demon cult would not be pursuing me so furiously. As if declaring a truce, both sides cut off the only remaining path that crossed the canyon, the Echoing Sword Bridge. Since the Echoing Sword Bridge was destroyed, there was no way for me to cross this valley anymore. The place I arrived at in my flight was a cliff, a far cry from a safe haven. After I fled from the demon cult's headquarters, I crossed over the Tao Mountain, Myungli Mountain, Chunhun Mountain, and many other nameless mountains and rivers. As I fled, I also cut my left arm, suffered a stab to my face, and injured my left shoulder. As I looked down the cliff with a sorrowful gaze, I realized it was as empty as my life. Contemplating the valley below, I wonder why I never got to date a beautiful woman before all this. It is said that when a person is about to die, the person they miss the most will flash before their eyes. And yet, none appeared before mine. A sigh escaped from my mouth. I should have at least gone on a date with someone. I live too seriously. I wish someone would write this on my tombstone. The crazy demon died while immersed in serious thoughts. Someone arrives with the sound of wind cutting the grass behind me. With that level of skill, 
it could only be the left hand of illuminating light, one of the strongest masters of the demon cult. He is also a master of trickery who appears at decisive moments after ordering his subordinates to chase first. The left hand of illuminating light is just as notorious as I am in Kang Ho. Before joining the demon cult, he was known as the pervert in Kang Ho. He gained notoriety as a pervert sadist who preyed among the beautiful wives of the noble families of Mudim, with his victims, including ladies from the Nam Gun, Salmun, and Bekri families. But while equally notorious, it doesn't mean that I'm also a pervert. I never got the chance to be one. Was it just my imagination, or did a sudden surge of anger rise from the death of my heart? Was it because of the left hand of illuminating light's arrival, or was it because of his dirty past? Despite being the man most feared by female warriors of the orthodox faction, the left hand of illuminating light lands on the ground with an incredibly cool posture. Do you have to be handsome to also be a pervert? Damn good-looking dirtbag. Looking at this almost scary-looking man, one with a notably high nose bridge, who chased me all the way here. I realized again why you shouldn't mess with the demon cult. The left hand of illuminating light approaches me with his hands behind his back and lowers his voice. I can't believe you're making me suffer so much. Damn bastard. I'll admit that your movement skill is much more advanced than what was rumored. I responded to the left hand of illuminating light's serious nonsense with a nonchalant expression. You're here, pervert. I've never seen a pervert run that hard. Very impressive. The left hand of illuminating light replies to me with a troubled expression, doubtless frustrated after being forced to chase me for three days and three nights. Shut up, you psycho. This isn't the time for jokes. Acting all calm while standing on the edge of a cliff. Read the room. Whether it's a cliff or a paradise, you're still a pervert. And teach your men some manners. I'm not a bitch, and definitely not a bastard, but I am an orphan. The atmosphere became solemn for a moment. Swearing at the parents I've never met before, you fucking rascals. That's why you're called the demon cult. Stop bullshitting and hand over the thing you stole. I snorted back in reply. If I give it back to you, you should call me an errand boy instead of crazy demon. What are you talking about? I'm saying I used to be an errand boy. Huh. The left hand of illuminating light lets out a tired sigh. <sighs> Meanwhile, the troops of the demon cult arrive and slowly gather around like dark clouds before a storm. Why do they like black clothes so much? The demon cult troops gather like storm clouds, closing in and surrounding the area while waiting for the left hand of illuminating light's orders. Everyone's eyes are razor sharp. More than a hundred people died by my hands during the chase, so I'm sure they're extremely fired up. If I cause such a severe blow to the demon cult, shouldn't the Mudim Alliance hand me the Hero of the Year award? Looking back at my past, I almost forgot that I had caused a lot of accidents and became Mudim's public enemy. Even my rank in the public enemy list is higher than the pervert in front of me. Even the nickname Crazy Demon was first given by the Orthodox factions. First of all, the Hero of the Year award is already impossible for me. Watching my smiling face, the left hand of illuminating light said, How can you laugh in this situation? Crazy demon, have you gone nuts? That's too bad. What? You must have held back your laughter when your sick leader farted. That's your limit. I'm sure you also force yourself to laugh every time the sick leader makes a lame joke. That's not true. Shut up. That's rich coming from someone like you. I always laugh as I please. Are you that scared of your sec leader, you ass kisser? The left hand of illuminating light replies with a begrudging look. Is there anyone in Kang Ho who is not afraid of our sec leader? No. Look at the leaders who always avoid our leader's suggestion of a one-on-one -on -one duel. Even if there is a powerful master stronger than the sec leader in Kang Ho, there is none around who don't fear him. You know this, right? What are you yapping about? I'm right here. When was I ever afraid of your sec leader? Then why did you waste everyone's time and run all the way here? I'm not afraid of the sec leader. I'm scared of you perverts. It'd be good for your mental health to leave the cult and focus more on your perversions that have nothing to do with your leader. Oh, left hand, that man behind you is smiling. 
I point my finger at the demon cult troops, but the gaze of the left hand of illuminating light fixates itself on me. The left hand of illuminating light says with a stern look, That's not going to work. I nod. That can't be helped. You guys chased me because of this, right? I carefully took the heavenly pearl out and held it to the left hand of illuminating light. The left hand of illuminating light's round eyes turned sharp like, turned sharp like a what? The left hand of illuminating light's round eyes turned sharp like a wildcat's that had starved for three days. I made a suggestion to the left hand. Seeing how your eyes twinkle as soon as you saw this heavenly pearl, you must be after it too. I thought it was strange for the left hand of illuminating light himself to come all the way here. Good thing we're far from your headquarters. Since it's like this, how about splitting this between us? We can split Congo between us, then you can fulfill all your perverted desires. I gently try to persuade the left hand, but his reaction is not positive. It belongs to the sect leader. But why are your eyes so greedy? Listen to me, demon cultists. The left hand has malicious intent towards the sect leader. One of you should go back first and report back to your sect leader. The left hand is trying to stir up a rebellion by taking the heavenly pearl. Who wants to contribute? No one? Cowards. Baiting is always fun. It might not work on the demon cult, but I am always persistent. Everyone, look at your superior. The left hand can't even answer me because he's troubled by my words. The left hand of illuminating light says in reply, Stop the crap and hand over the heavenly pearl. Just give it back and we'll step down for now. We didn't want to kill you from the start. Oh really? As I said, the heavenly pearl is more important than your life. I'll visit you personally later and punish you for your sins. I'll even fight you one-on-one. There's a lying tongue over there. In a one-on-one fight? Yes. Should you be saying that after quartering me? If you had agreed to duel me from the start, a hundred of your men wouldn't have died. An idiot pervert like you always messes things up. I'd rather become a monk than believe you. Everyone, get out of the way. This heavenly pearl is round in shape and makes a clear sound every time you tap it. It makes a great wooden bell. A monk will never let go of his wooden bell. Then I'll have no choice but to kill you. Bring it on, you bastards. I shall become a mad monk today. Contrary to my words, I raise my hand as if I'm about to throw the heavenly pearl down the valley. The left hand of illuminating light extends his hand in a hurry. D- Don't! Seeing the surprise and panic flash across the left hand of illuminating light's face, I thought it was a rewarding day. It became clear. What I had stolen was indeed both tremendous and formidable. Even if I still don't know what this is, if I throw the heavenly pearl down the valley, the left hand of illuminating light and his subordinates would have to jump down the cliff. The left hand of illuminating light tries to appease me with some fast talking. What's wrong with you? The reason why I closed one eye to your nonsense and let you live is that you can keep tormenting the Mudim Alliance leader. We always favor Mudim's enemies, but this changes things. I've been courteous enough to ask you to join us, but instead, you stole a sacred object? Repaying my goodwill with stealing? That's inhumane. But I can't give it back because you swore at my parents. I apologize. We are not afraid of you, but we cannot disobey our leader's commands. So please, return the sacred item to us. Is that how you should beg? Is that how a thief should speak? My arms extend toward the valley again. I'll throw it away now. Let's go for a real round. I apologize. Wait a minute. Let's talk this through. I nod. Well then, tell me what this heavenly pearl is. Don't try to lie. Tell me the truth. Come on, man. I'm dying of curiosity. Chapter 3 Tell your cult leader I'm sorry. The left hand of illuminating light's face becomes sullen at my words. I only called it a sacred item. How did you know that it's called a heavenly pearl? Do you think all I did these past three days was run? I also had a great time eating, taking a dump, reciting poems, and torturing your men. I even went sailing. It was a fulfilling time. The left hand of illuminating light glares at his men, waiting behind him, and then asks, You weaklings couldn't even handle this torture? Your men should know what this is, but they know nothing. I must know what this is before I die. The left hand of illuminating light replies to me in a low tone. Crazy demon, that is a special supplement made for the cult leader. If other people consume it, their limbs will melt, so don't even think about it. 
Its method of creation is complex and precise. That's why I came personally to retrieve it. Stop lying through your teeth. Do I look like an innocent lady from the Nam Gung family? Or a Beck Lee family beauty that lightens up men's faces? You fucking pervert. You don't believe me when I tell you the truth. It is called a sacred item because the cult leader has to take it. You have to believe me. That's strange. If this is a supplement, wouldn't that old man take this before starting closed door training? Everyone has their own circumstances. His martial arts training has its own strict order. How did you make it? It looks refined instead of being found in nature. Will you give it to me if I tell you? Instead of answering, I look into the left hand of Illuminating Light's eyes. Nope. Knowing the evil deeds that the demon cult has committed so far, I could roughly guess how it was made. Moreover, the color of the heavenly pearl changes depending on the surrounding temperature and sunlight. It was as if extreme yang and extreme yin energies were mixing inside. If I had to describe it, the pearl's structure was in a yin and yang pattern. In the demon cult's terms, it's a reverse yin and yang. It also meant that the supplement is no ordinary medicine because it is instilled with both yin and yang energies. It wouldn't be strange if Kang Ho faced destruction if this made it to the hands of the demon cult's leaders. Damn it. The Mood and Alliance has to hand me that Hero of the Year award for this. Fuckers. My predictions came true. Ah, I get it now. I think I'm a genius. Let me guess. This is why you guys attack different sects and declare wars with the Mood and Alliance all the time. I don't know how, but you took out the essence of living warriors and distilled it into this pill. It probably wasn't easy to make either, since you had to extract both extreme yin and extreme yang energy. While I was explaining, I realized the cult leader's underlying intentions. Only if the person has a yin and yang body, or have their dungeon balanced with extreme yin and yang energy, can its effects be maximized. Ah, is that why the old man did closed door training? Was I wrong? Or was the old geezer planning to change to a different body? The supplement would be more effective when taken in a new body. The left hand of illuminating light smiles as he listens to my explanation. Damn bastard, I thought you were just a brainless freak. You're welcome. Think of what you want. Even if you knew the truth, it still costs more than your life. Right. You don't have a yin and yang body, so give it to me. If the cult leader takes this, he will become invincible. He's already powerful enough. Just how much stronger does he plan to be? I can't give it to you. That's how a lone hero does things. I was joking, but left hand didn't laugh at all. This is why the demon cult and I can't get along. The left hand of illuminating light continues to stare at me. He must be scared I will fall down into the valley if we fight. In fact, it's too much of a hassle to jump into the valley myself. Just what kind of idiot would jump off a cliff? Unless a miracle is waiting down below, that is. Then, the only answer is to do something that annoys the left hand of illuminating light in this situation. My injuries are severe anyway so I swallow the heavenly pearl without much thought. Watching as the heavenly pearl goes down my esophagus with a gulp, the left hand's face turns pale white. Savoring the taste of the heavenly pearl, I say, It's sweet. It tastes like peaches and has a refreshing aftertaste. Did you mix peaches in for the old cult leader's sake? <laughs> Not only the left hand of illuminating light, but his subordinates are also staring at me with wide eyes. To exaggerate it a little, Every one of them looked like they were about to faint. The left hand of illuminating light points at me and stutters in disbelief. You, you, you ate it? My face becomes slightly grim. You said it was a supplement, crazy bastard. Supplements are good for the body. I wish you the misfortune of the old cult leader's commands. Relax. Your men will report what they exactly saw, or maybe I'll kill you all with my own hands. Left hand stomps his feet in anger and yells. You crazy punk! That- I act like a fool on purpose. Should I have given it to the cult leader? But it's already gone into my stomach. Ugh! The sensation of the heavenly pearl entering my stomach is strange. I'm not joking, but it weirdly tastes like a large peach. However, my body was feeling even stranger. I frown and touch my lower abdomen. It feels like my dungeon is being forcefully torn into two. From the demon cult troop's perspective, my face must have been slowly becoming paler. I am experiencing the bizarre feeling of my dungeon forcefully becoming half extreme yin 
and half extreme yang. It's not a painful process, so it must be the effect of a sacred item. Grinding his teeth, the left hand of illuminating light orders his men, Kill him! No, catch him alive! I'll grind him alive and present him to the cult leader. Roger! I hold out my hand and frown as if I'm about to say something. Wait! Roger, my ass! I have something to say! I feel sick! Wait, I think I have to spit it out! I look at the left hand with the most serious expression in the world. Hearing that I'm about to spit the heavenly pearl out, left hand raises his hand and puts his men on standby. Halt! The left hand holds his breath. I continue with a serious expression. My dungeon! What about your dungeon? It's heating up and cooling back down and forth. I think I have an upset stomach. This supplement doesn't work well with my body. In fact, every time I farted, it, it rang like a thunderstorm, causing the troops to frown and cover their noses. The left hand of illuminating light covers his nose with his hand and says, Spit it out already. I also cover my nose and reply, Stop whining like a baby. I never said I'd spit it out. I have to take a shit. You guys head down the mountain first. I'm a gentleman, so I can't let you see me take a dump. What? As I watch left hand's face grow white, I calmly say, Tell the cult leader that I'm sorry, and that he can come back later and dig through my shit. My shit contains answers to becoming a demon god. Ah, he will become the first person to become a grand demon cult leader, using poop. At last, the name of the crazy demon took the greatest dump in the world. How legendary. After trying to listen to me seriously, the left hand of illuminating light eventually loses his reason and shoots energy through his palms at me. Damn it. I have no choice but to counteract the left hand of illuminating light's attack with a strolling golden turtle technique. Immense palm-shaped energies collide in the air. Boom! The left hand of illuminating light was knocked back at a tremendous speed and I got pushed back three or four steps out over the valley's gaping mouth. At that moment, I learned for the first time that the left hand of illuminating light had mastered an extremely cold nature martial arts technique. So this bastard mastered ice chi. The left hand was pushed back a little further than I, but my pride is hurt because of my severe injuries. I become momentarily flustered as I feel my body begin falling down the cliff. Things never go as planned. Watching the demon cult members getting further away as I fall, I laugh. <laughs> my laughter echoes through the valley, and before I knew it, it rang so loud that it filled the heavens and earth. Did my laughter become this loud because of the heavenly pearl? Also, the valley is profoundly deep. I continue to laugh as I fall endlessly into the valley's abyss. While my legs were fine, the strange energy of the heavenly pearl crawling in my dungeon is causing my strength to overflow despite my exhaustion. This wasn't planned either. Just before hitting the floor, the force of my fall is offset by my smiling windstorm technique. My body flips three and a half times before landing lightly on the ground. An almost perfect landing. <laughs> I look up and see the left hand of illuminating light and his low-ranking troops who might die as they fall from that height had also jumped down into the valley and are running toward me. They might be my enemies, but seeing how the whole group jumped down at a single command is so impressive that I can't help but admire and give them applause. Whoa, those damn lunatics. The demon cult is indeed the demon cult. They would do anything to follow in order. That's why the Mudim Alliance could never penetrate through to the demon cult's headquarters. But half of them will die from fracturing their bodies. Several die instantly after hitting the bottom of the cliff or protruding rocks, filling the valley with their screams. As I watch them die, I understand Left Hand's words that there is no one in this world who does not fear the cult leader. The Demon Cult is a terrifying organization. Although their official name was the Heavenly Demon Cult, only the cultists themselves call it that. Then suddenly, the valley, the blue sky, and even the Demon Cult believers falling through the air disappear as everything turns white. Hmm? Oh my goodness, everything is pure white. A man then floats down the air in front of me, his face being obscured from my sight by a peculiarly brilliant light. Damn, I wasn't expecting this kind of a surprise. Just who is this guy? I have a hunch that the fate of my life is in his hands from this moment on. To my surprise, I can no longer hear the wind. As if the world had stopped, a mysterious man slowly descends to the ground in silence. What the hell? What kind of martial arts is that? I'm surprised that a man can descend from that height with his hands behind his back. As I quickly scan the surroundings, I notice that even the bottom of the valley is pure white. 
the man with an overwhelming presence approaches me with his hands behind his back and says, I can't believe you swallowed an item with souls inside it so easily. You must be crazy. I shudder the moment I hear his voice. It is a strange voice mixed with martial artists' confidence, courage, and dignity. A voice that transcends the mundanity of existence. This man is on a different level. I ask him, I am indeed crazy, but who are you? Only then did I get a close look at the mysterious man. He wore the same attire as a martial artist like me, but they are way out of fashion. It gives the impression of an absolute martial master that had walked out on an ancient painting. Even the best martial masters of this era would not be able to maintain their sanity in front of this overwhelming presence. I'm well informed of all the true masters of Kang Ho, but the identity of this man is a mystery to me. I voice out my innermost thoughts. You're strong. I'm sure I've never praised anyone like this before. I'm surprised that I didn't know of such a man present in Kang Ho. The man replies to me with a hesitant look. Indeed. You're holding out well in front of me too. That's good. But why did you swallow the heavenly pearl? Numerous souls of incredible martial artists are locked up in the heavenly pearl, and now they can't ascend. Do you understand this? Do you take me as a fool? The man touches his chin for a while and agonizes before continuing. Those souls are unable to ascend and are now stuck to your soul. What? If you sleep, the souls will wake you, and if you eat, they will share the essence of the food, and the spirits will cling on to whoever you touch, and your chi will go berserk and explode. In the midst of that, I note some pleasant words. Oh, I like the sound of that about my chi. The man continues. You are now a living heavenly pearl and a half-ghost. There's no longer a chance for you to live a normal life. I never lived a normal life in the first place. So it seems. You've been through a lot of chi deviation. How do you know that? If you have time, look in the mirror. Your eyes aren't normal. Chi deviation often comes with mental illnesses. What if the cult leader had eaten this heavenly pearl instead? I didn't eat it because I wanted to. I didn't want the cult leader to have it. The man smiles. Did you eat it with good intentions? That's right. It's the truth. Somehow, this guy seems to have the ability to see through lies. That's also why he knows I'm not lying. The man sighs and continues. It seems that you're speaking the truth. The heavenly pearl is an item that goes against nature. If the cult leader had taken this, I would have been punished for my involvement in what came after. But things never go as planned in this world. Such is the nature of the scary world, that even such a great man can have something unexpected happen to them. He continues, Even so, even so, those souls must ascend. That way, the past life's mistakes will be considered and individually judged in the afterworld. Many people who have lived a fairly good life are locked in there, and they must be freed. What should I do then? It sounds like you're asking me to die faster. I can't do that. Why don't you take me to the cult leader? I think I'll be able to die in peace if I at least die with that old geezer. I'll kill him and then end myself. The man responded with a smile. Don't play tricks on me. I'm caught already. You're quick-witted. Why do you hate the cult leader so much? Don't even start. Why? Why? The cult leader doesn't see people as equal to him. My life's long-cherished desire was to beat the cult leader to death. I raise my finger as I'm about to reply to his question. But the man seems to already know my answer. The man replies, Because he doesn't see others as human. I nod while maintaining eye contact with the man. Exactly, and that was the entire reason I wanted to kill him. The man folds his arm and smiles faintly. That's a good reason. A good reason? I stare at the man. Strangely, he is a man I could converse normally with. I couldn't believe it initially, but this man must have been close to God. The man unfolds his arms and sighs as if giving up on something before pointing his finger at me and saying, Li Jia. I widen my eyes. He knows my name. The man continues. This is your final chance. Don't swallow the heavenly pearl again. I'll be serving my punishment, so I won't be able to help you. Whatever the result, I'll treat you with kindness. This is the best choice I can give and the best gift you will receive. The man reaches out to me. For a moment, I wonder if I'm about to die. Given the circumstances, I probably won't. 
As soon as a light flashes from the man's extended hand, I wonder what the hell it was as my five senses disappear. Huh? It seems like my consciousness is about to be cut off. Am I dead? It feels like my whole body is falling apart, but there is no pain. My soul whispers, just before I lose consciousness, I don't want to die yet. Oh, I... I've never been with a beautiful woman. Damn it. 